Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to my happy place. Today is Friday, October 22nd, 2021, and this episode is my So Simple Shapes remix number eight, and it's for the month of October. And so what we're going to be doing is, you saw in the open video, um, stockings, right? It's all about stockings. And so I thought it would be really fun to just take one shape and see what we can do with it. And for this month, I chose this stocking shape right here. Okay. And it's J34, so simple shape. And it comes from the Vintage Housewife set. This is the stocking. We used it this way. We used it this way um, to hang on the clothesline in that quilt of the Vintage Housewife quilt. And so I did tall ones and uh, medium ones and short ones in the quilt that were hanging on the line. And so I thought it would be really fun to do that in the same, you know, for this. So I'm doing several things with these stockings. So I guess we can talk about that for just a second. And then I'll show you how to make the stockings and everything that I do. And then we can talk more about it at the end. But I'm going to be doing a quilt going to be doing buntings, I'm going to be doing um, Christmas tree ornaments, and also gift tags. And um, then on the Riley Blake Designs blog, they did um, where they used treat bags. They glued them onto a treat bag after they applicated them. That's so super cute. So I'll leave a link to that. And remember, this series is um, the Riley Blake Designs newsletter is where you get the free pattern the third Wednesday of every month. And then the third Friday of every month, I do a tutorial on that So Simple Shape. So, all right, so now we know that it's J34, but notice the printing, this um, is on the right side here and the sock goes this way. So if you want your socks to go this way, which is traditionally kind of how a Christmas stocking goes, then I would trace it, which is how I did mine, with the right side down, meaning trace it in reverse or whatever. But just so you know, however you trace it is what it's going to end up looking like. Okay, so if you trace it with the writing right side up, then your to toes are going to point that way and opposite. All right. And so the tracing, all I do is... Um, I cut my interfacing. Let's talk about the cutting. Okay. Here, I might as well just put this in here so you can see. Okay, so the interfacing for the tall stocking, and this is my sew-in interfacing that I always use. It's called the Bee in My Bonnet sew-in interfacing. I cut three inches wide by seven and a half inches tall, and that's for the tall stocking. For the medium stocking, three inches by five and a half inches tall and the short stocking three inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Okay, so that's what I um, cut the interfacing and then tracing it, let me push this Miss Doris out of the way for a minute. Then I'm going to lay this down here onto the interfacing and of course for the tall one, I just simply take my mechanical pencil. This is a 0.5, I don't like a real thick line but if you like a seven, go ahead and use that. I mean, you just have to be able to see your line. So, but I can see these fine. So that's what my tall one looks like because that's just, of course, going around the shape. But for the medium one, you're gonna use this line right here. So what you're gonna do is start right there and go around and trace to that. And then just pull down right here and draw your line across. Okay, that's the medium. And then for the short one, you're just gonna use the next line down. And this is just how we did it uh, in the sew along quilt as well. Sometimes when I know that we're gonna use different lines for different things instead of making three different shapes, it's just as easy to take one shape and just draw a few lines on it. Looks like I missed tracing that toe a little bit. Okay, I'll fill that in. All right, so that's that's what you um, trace, and then I just put them in their little piles. I'll put the short one on here. Where's the medium ones? 
Okay, so then that's how I keep them separated like that. Get them ready to sew. And so I'm gonna set my shape over here. And then let's talk about fabric. So you can see that I'm just using scrappy fabric. Let's see, let me find some that have a shorter cuff like that. And so what I do is I'm cutting three inch wide strips of fabric. So you can grab your three and a half inch wide scrappy strips baskets, or you can just start cutting three inch strips like I do. So this is just, I've been using this one. Let's see, let's get a longer one. Here's one that I haven't, that I've just cut and I haven't done anything with yet. Okay, so this is for my bead cross stitch. And all I did was cut a three inch by width of fabric strip, okay? And so I'm not measuring for each sock measurement. I start out with strips and this is the faster way and I'll show you why I do that. Okay, so I start out with strips and as, you know, they get shorter and shorter as I use them for the stockings, obviously. But let's separate this pile and let me show you what I've got going on. Okay. So, what I do is, when I cut the strip with the fabric, when I start out, I will, oh, I forgot to tell you. So I'll take a strip and before I start doing anything with this, I will take my one and a half inch wide ruler like this. And I'll just cut that right there so that I have cuffs for the top of stockings, okay? So I have a whole bunch of cuffs here. This is just left over from a stocking that I can cut into a cuff. And then I just keep them randomly on here so that I have my strips and my cuffs. So, okay, back to, so what I do is I take a strip. I don't even really worry about ironing them at this point. And I just sew a cuff to each end and press open. Okay, so I have that done with a lot of these long strips here. Okay. Also, by doing it this way and starting out this way, I can see what color of cuffs that I have so I'm not putting the same color on the same print, just so that I have a good variety. So I make sure, you know, like this is cottage on my denim. There's lipstick on the other one. So that's what I do on those, and that's how I start that. Now when I'm getting down to shorter and shorter fabric as I trim it down then I know that I don't have room to put another cuff here and be able to get you know two stockings on. I'll know that I'll just be able to get a short stocking out of that. Okay and so these are just all the different heights that I know that I can do get a short one or medium or tall one or whatever left out. So what I wanted to show you about the cuffs is you can do them different heights. See how these are two aqua stockings here. This is a short height. This is a medium, maybe taller, whatever, but there's no measuring because this is already traced. Okay. So if I'm doing this stocking, I can decide how, let me get one that has more contrast so you can see. Okay. See that contrast through there. I can decide by putting this clear up there to start sewing that that's going to be a very deep cuff, right? Or if I just want that cute and little bitty, then I start down there. And I would just sew around there. And then this I would cut off and put right here on this design board for to use for a cuff on another stocking. So this way I'm not, I haven't measured out every little piece lengthwise for a large um, stocking or a tall stocking, medium and short. I just start with the strips and I start cutting down and that's how I sew. And I always just do the cuffs first and um, I'll show you how to sew that one just because I kind of talked about that. And I'm going to show you how to do a medium one. And so what I'll do with that, I'll just grab that. And so this is what I do. I grab a strip and I'm like, okay, yeah, I like that. That's going to look good. And so then I'll just take my scissors at that point and just cut that off and put that in my stack for later. And I'll usually just grab a bunch, you know, of stockings like um, 
I'll do a dozen at a time or two dozen at a time, whatever I want to do. And this one will be like, okay, that would, that would make a really nice tall stocking. So I'm just going to do that, measure it, and it's a lot faster that way than trying to rotary cut all these different pieces and deciding what you want. Okay, so that's what I that's what I do. Start doing them in batches that way. I'm just gonna leave my little piles there. Aren't these cute? This is what it looks like on the back with the interfacing. And you saw in the in the video up front how fun these were. These are mostly I just use my scraps, my fabrics, and then I got into my Civil War. Civil War-ish kind of more primish looking fabrics and cut some strips there too so that I can mix that up with mine just to give them a little bit, you know, more of a prim look. And not real prim, like real rustic, but just a little bit more primitive look. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, again, I want this one a little bit shorter cuff, so I'm going to just pull it down here. I don't pin. I find that my sewing interfacing kind of, I shouldn't say sticks to it, but it just makes it so that it doesn't slide because of the texture of this. And all I do is I'm going to start sewing across here. Sew right on the line, come around, and then sew across here again. And that way it's secure and there's no back stitching. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do on all three of these with right sides up and just putting, putting this up or down however far I want to to make that cuff the height. Okay, so, and I'm gonna just um, do them all three in a row, chain piecing them with having a little scrap piece of fabric in between like I usually do, and I'm gonna be sewing on Miss Doris today. So I've got these three sewn, super simple, just sew on the lines. You just start here again. You can go, you can go fast. It's just like driving on a road. You can go fast and straight and then you just slow down on the curves and just keep going around and it's really easy. Then what you're going to do is just like all of my other shapes, you're going to um, trim an approximate, um, you know, it's always smaller than a quarter inch, but it's bigger than an eighth. So just kind of in between a scant quarter inch, but if it's a bigger shape, you know, you could maybe have a bigger seam allowance, but because um, these are small, I don't want them to be real bulky. So, and so what I do is just cut around them. All right, so I've got these trimmed up and you can see that I started with the seam ripper, making sure that I wasn't poking a hole back here. And I'm just going to finish up to about an inch to an inch and a half by taking these little scissors and clipping just a little bit farther. Making sure, again, that I'm not clipping into the fabric just where I started here. And then there's an inner curve on these stockings that I always do like three little clips right here. So I want to come in here a little bit closer. And I just do like one, two, and three. And I do them right to the thread. So you'll just do that one again, just to make sure. Right to the thread, but not into the thread because I don't wanna clip into my stitches. And that's all you need on those inner curves. So one, two, three. One, two, Okay, I like to use small scissors to do that with. I don't want to use my big scissors because you can't really see sometimes in there and you just you want to have a little bit more control in that. And then all I do is just turn them like this. 
use my finger to kind of poke out the toe and the top a little bit and then grab the turner. I always work with the interfacing facing me so that I'm just working with the fabric and see I'm just kind of poking out those corners but I'm doing it very gently and I just come around like this kind of shape and I especially go gently around the curves. I don't want to poke a hole in my stocking. But if you do poke a hole in your stocking, in the toe of your stocking, an easy way to, let me show you how to darn that stocking, is you just take your, um, your Sue glue and put a little bit of glue on that um, where the hole, where the little fabric um, has frayed out and then you just kind of fold it over and push it down until it dries and that will just be totally fine when you go to applique. So that's how to darn your stocking. Okay, so after I've shaped it like that, I can use my quick press here. And you could just do that, or you can use both by taking it over here and just giving it a press with the iron. Use the clapper to get it flat. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn and shape these and press these as well. Okay, look what happened. I have to darn my stocking, I poked a hole. But these are all good, but so now I, instead of just explaining it to you, I'm just gonna tell you what I do. So when that happens, I don't know why that had a little dried glue on the end. I think I just, this isn't a new one. Okay, hang on a minute. All right, okay, sorry about that. My, had, my glue was a little bit dry at the top. I guess I didn't put my lid on tight enough because that's really never happened to me. Okay, so see where that's frayed out there? So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there and not a ton and maybe onto the back because it takes just a minute to dry. But I'm just going to fold it over to where you can't see that. Kind of hold it down with my fingers. And just because I want you to see it, I'm going to lift off. I hope this is not too soon. But anyway, it, well, yeah, too soon. Anyway, if you hold it down there long enough, it just folds right down and you can't see it. And then when you sew it down, it's not a big deal. Okay, so when I go to um, sew that one down or something, I'll, I'll uh, re-glue it and do a little bit better. But if you really are worried about it, at this point, you can easily just flip it back out and sew over the toe again over here and then just turn it again and shape it. So it's not like you have to ruin this one because it's got a you know a hole in it, you can fix it. Okay, so there is the short and the medium and the tall stocking. And I'll just add them here to this pile. And so you saw the, the video of the quilt here. Cassidy, you wanna just, can you show it over there? Yeah. A little bit on the wall. Okay, so that's what I got going here. And um, I'm definitely gonna make a quilt. I wanna make a big quilt, but it would be really cute to make it just a small mini quilt too, if you wanted to. And you could um, put plain fabrics on the top, like, um, let's see, where's my little, I did another little set of stockings with, um, starting some family names. All right, I found them. So here's the stockings that I had going when I started putting um, some names on. And what I did was I used the background fabric or a solid fabric, you could use whatever, but I'm having happened to be using the um, linen right here for my background. Okay, this is this is linen from Riley Blake, and this is in the natural color, okay? And it's really soft and really nice. I've used this for my Farm Sweet Farm sew-along quilt. 
with the background. I really like using this for a background fabric and I thought it would be really fun for these stockings. But now I wouldn't put, I wouldn't use this fabric for the cuff to put on there because then it wouldn't show up. But this one I'm happen to be doing a garland out of, okay? And all I do is use this Pigma pen after I sewed them to write their names on. But I think that's really gonna be cute. And what I do with the garland is I just use like jute to hang or yarn or something like that and use a cute little clothes pin. And I think that's gonna be really fun. I'm gonna be adding some more family names and I'm gonna make it so that I have a whole bunch going across my uh, fireplace. And I think that's really gonna be fun. So that's one thing that you can do with them. And, um, but let's talk about the quilt real quick. Okay, so coming back here, what I'm doing is using this linen and let me get my paper back out here again. This is how big I cut my background. So this is for the small, for the short stocking. It's four and a half inches wide. So they're all four and a half inches wide. And this one's six inches tall. This one's seven inches tall. And this one's nine inches tall. Now, whenever I'm doing applique, whether it's by machine or by hand, I always cut my background a little bit bigger, as you know. And so I'm gonna end up um, trimming these down to, let me see, let me, I put my other paper over here. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna trim them down. The tall one, I will trim this down after it's applique to four inches wide by eight inches tall. The medium one, I'll trim down after my stocking is applique to four inches wide and six and a half inches tall. And then the short one, I'll trim to four inches wide and five inches tall. And that's what I'll do after I sew them into the quilt. But right now, you know, Cassidy laid these stockings out for me on the design wall and she just kind of overlapped the seams a little bit so you could see what it would look like. But, you know, you can trim them down to whatever size you want. But I really like using this linen. It's really soft and nice and it just gives everything a nice little feel to it on the background. So let me just show you what I do with the background. I just like any of my so simple shapes, I'll take my stocking and I'll turn it over here, put a few dots of glue around here on the back and then I'll just turn it around and I try to make it so the top and bottom's about the same and about from here to here is about the same. And I'll just glue it down. I don't even pin base these down. I will do it on a design board though so that I don't have any glue coming in through the back or anything. And that's what I do, okay, for the quilt. Now, when I'm quilting it, I pulled these over and did these to show you. I have done a few quilts with machine applique like this. In fact, one of them I did was on the linen fabric, but I am just going to machine applique them with a top stitch, okay? And I've showed this on my blog before. I did this with my tulips, tulip pots with uh, way back when I did my Autumn Love Sew Along. I did a bonus quilt and we did some uh, flower pots, not tulip pots, I think it was flower pots or fall flowers or something like that, but it's on my blog during the Autumn Love Sew Along. And that's how I did those, as I simply, just after they were glued on, I went ahead and machine applique them just using this neutral thread like this or something to match your background so that you're not changing thread colors because you have two different colors here. And normally I match my appliques in thread, but this one, I really like how that looks. And that's all I did. I started right here on the seam and backstitched a little bit and went around and just top stitched. And I did that right here on Miss Doris on my featherweight. It was really easy. And so that's what it looks like on the front. That's what it looks like on the back. And now I can go ahead and trim this, you know, trim these down before I sew them into the quilt. So when I'm sewing them into the quilt, I am doing them in rows this way. Okay, so I'm doing vertical rows, not horizontal, like you normally do with a quilt most of the time because they have the same common, common number of width. So they will be trimmed to four inches wide. And so I can just sew them on top of each other. And then the next one I can add, add the rows. And this way you can make the quilt as big as you want or as small as you want by adding rows. Now, when you go to add rows and you get to the bottom and you have a little bit of space left or something, then you could just cut another piece of 
your background and just add to the bottom. It's not going to matter because this is all going to be quilted around, okay? Or another thing that you can do is just in your rows, make sure that you always have like, say three tall, three short, and three medium in a row. And then it doesn't matter how, how they're placed differently in the rows, as long as you have that many, then it's always gonna line up mathematically. So that's how I'm going to do it in the quilt. I want a big quilt on mine, so I wanna be making these stockings for a long time. I've been making these for quite a while and I'm still not bored making them. I wanna keep making them. I just think they're so fun. They're so cute and all the different fabrics. And I'm just trying to use a little smaller prints, you know, not great big. This is probably like the biggest scale of print that I'm using these right here, maybe, and this little flower. But I really like how they look. And then once you've picked your background like this, I just made sure that I didn't, like this, my pebble looks nice on that, but I couldn't use my pewter fabric because it would just wash out with the background. It wouldn't show up. So if you're doing like a dark background of, you know, maybe like a steel gray or something, then just make sure that you don't use any steel gray colors of stockings so that it won't wash out, okay? So that's that's the quilt. And um, I talked to you about the garland, how I do that. And um, for Christmas tree ornaments, I thought it would be really fun to, I showed you in a picture in the slideshow, but, but it would be really fun to um, add a little button and add a little, here, let me just, all these out right here. So I did kind of lay some out in the pictures, but what about if you did that and you put a little button in the corner? You can pick whatever size you want. These are just some of my cute little buttons. But wouldn't that be cute right there to kind of sew? And what I did with, this is my uh, linen, chunky thread, and yes, it matches the Riley Glick linen. And this is some I just had on a floss flower, so I just grabbed these and just put them into a little knot like this. And so I would add that onto the stocking, maybe at the same time that I'm sewing the button on, okay? But if you're putting them on a tree and you're worried about them seeing the back, then all you have to do is do another stocking, but you would just trace it going the other way. So let me grab, let me grab this little pile here. All right. So I did this stocking right here and I traced it going the other way so that you could back it with that, right? You can do the exact same fabrics. You could just do them scrappy, whatever, so that you could see them on both sides. And what I would do is just, let me put those down so, 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 so not, you could just whip stitch around them. You could just straight stitch like I did on a sewing machine and go all the way around it, okay? And then you would have the finished look there. This one, I didn't do a cuff. You could do that, or you could just do a cuff. You know, you, you can just do whatever you want. You could back it with wool. You could back it with felt. Whatever you wanted to do, you could do the blanket stitch around it to make it more decorative. But what I thought would be really fun, um, especially for if you want to use these for gift tags, which I think would be really cute. Just Can't you just see these on, like, a brown paper package and do that and put their name on the top like I did? right here, wouldn't that be cute? And you put a little, the little tie in there and uh, put that on the package and then they have a little ornament that they can keep, but I think that'd be fun. And um, I think it'd be fun to when you sew them together to leave the top open because I think a candy cane would fit perfectly in there. You could just put it in there and the little hook would um, stick out. And for the small candy canes, you know, those little mini ones, you can use the small stockings, so you could make whatever size you choose to do. And so that's about the gift tags. I told you about Riley Blake's blog to visit them to see how they did the treat bags. And let's see, the ornaments. I think it would be really fun for the ornaments just to do all sizes, and that's what I'm going to do. So these, some of these will be on my quilt, and some of these will be hanging on my tree this year for Christmas. And... Um, I'm going to be doing some granny squares and putting on my tree. I'm going to be, it's just going to be kind of a fun tree this year. And um, I think 
you know, that's all the things that I'm going to do with them right now that I can think of, but, you know, probably more ideas will come down the pike and you might think of other ideas as well. But I just wanted you to be able to get creative with just this one shape. Next month, I'm going to be doing just a one shape as well. And uh, just to show you a few different things and to really kind of go crazy with it and think outside the box or think outside the block. And so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I want to show you again what these look like for the machine applique, or you can hand applique. You can do whatever you want. After you've put them into your quilt, you can put buttons on them as well. You can do whatever you want. I'm just going to leave mine plain. I'm going to hang mine. Um, I'm going to bring it out for fall because I think these kind of look fallish as well. I'm going to keep it out for Christmas. Um, it'll be really fun hung in my laundry room. So uh, a lot of fun things to do with these stockings into a quilt. And so hope you've enjoyed today and I will be back next week with another tutorial or a floss tube. I can't remember which one is on my schedule, but I will be back next week and I will chat with you later.